Hey, what's up guys? This would be part two of using solar panels to charge a e-bike. So in the last one, I showed you guys how I added the connectors to it. A little bit of modification. I added an adapter to add some um, Anderson connections and these will be used so I can basically connect things up in series instead of parallel if I need to. So in order to use that and to be efficient I had to do a little bit of a upgrade to the all power solar panel. It's a little building controller that it has there basically I'm going to remove that and add my uh, own uh, Anderson wire to it that basically allows me to connect it in parallel series any way i choose it and not be limited by a building controller as you can see over here i've already done it to one of my panels there so just other thing nice about it is when it folds up it actually folds up to slightly bit smaller so gives me a little bit more uh, room in my uh, pannier bags so to do this upgrade <laughs> what you need to do is you basically unroll your solar panel to where the cells aren't showing and you're going to need a very very specialized tool a very very big screwdriver now i could have tried to get through this side and find out where the screws were but i would end up adding four more additional holes to it that are already over on this side so what you do is you get your screwdriver and you get it up and under it and near corners of each one of it is where the screw is at what you need to do is pry it really really hard you may have to do some twisty motions there you go and that's that's how i know it was successful right there <laughs> all right <laughs> so that took me i don't know probably a good four minutes to do it of course the magic of editing i didn't show all that but yeah it takes Quite a bit of prying to break all four screws off of it and now you can see the two wires on the back one of them is totally exposed at least on my version of it and that would be the uh, negative lead and this one is the positive i used my meter to to test it so the black one with the coating is definitely the positive once you unsolder these two connections you'll see right underneath the post too this one says positive and this one says negative so I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to get my soldering iron. That's the other thing you'll need for this job is a soldering iron because I'm going to basically take off these and then solder on the new wire. And of course, to make everything look pretty, I'll throw some heat shrink on it. All this stuff uh, for this upgrade, except for like the screwdriver, can be found down in the description below. Um, also, except for the silicone, and I'll also be adding a little bit of silicone to protect these connections from any kind of uh, water, so it doesn't end up shortening them out. Uh, I've already done the, that on this end of the Anderson. I put silicone in there just just as a paranoid precaution to basically make sure nothing shorts it out. So I'm gonna get my soldering iron hot real quick and do this. Also, it doesn't hurt to have a thing of flux. Uh, really saves a lot of time with soldering gives you gives you a cleaner uh removal and and actually uh, at soldering things too things so definitely a fan of flux a little sticky is only downside but you got that all soldered up got some heat shrinks on there i'm going to use my uh, universal heat gun to basically get that to cling on to there <laughs> Okay, and that looks pretty good. All right, and now for the four holes that are in there, basically, I've done one a little bit there, but what I do is I take the little posts and I take the soldering iron and I melt them in there to basically seal up that part of this material so water doesn't collect in there behind the material. All right, and then uh, I use a little GE silicone. Picks up Walmart, I think it's like five bucks or something like that. But basically, I'm gonna add that right where these wires came out. Okay, and there it is. Now it has an Anderson connection on it as well. And which the reason I went with Anderson, so 
like I said, it's so I can connect in series, but I can separate the polarity. Because in the case of series connection, we're going to want to connect two of the panels to each other. So, so basically what I do is just connect red to black, like so. And then the other two, red and blacks, then are my positive and negative, and those join together. Virtually just joining the two panels, or, or more, I guess in the case of doing series. But yeah, that's how the Anderson connections work. They're definitely a little bit pricey, but it was either that or, be, or like the MC4, which is also used in a lot of rooftop solar, but the problem I have with those is the size of them. There's way too much volume, and uh, I need these for on bike tour, so I needed everything uh, in a better size there. And these are definitely better. That's a 14 gauge. They were using um, 16 gauge, and then some of my adapters I was trying to use, unfortunately, I, I don't know what this stuff was, 20 it was then. So this definitely should give me uh, better results. And then on top of that, I also got a little meter. It's a uh, 150A <laughs> a meter. Basically, it'll show you uh, how many uh, watt hours or your peak uh, watt hours and things like that are running. I have a little screen I had on there. I tried waterproofing it. Um, okay, I don't recommend waterproofing this. I blocked up the vents in the back thinking, ah, it wasn't that much heat. And it basically in the Phoenix Sun, it cooked off the front screen. So there's that. I guess it's not waterproof no more. So I just need to remove the silicone from there. And I remember where source and load are because, well, the way I made the cables. But yeah, hopefully this would definitely give me a lot better performance hooking up series because then it's closer to the battery voltage. So we'll see. Anyways, try to have a good day. Oh.